boys. Boys, 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 boys. I don't care if you say you're a boy or a boy. And if you say you're a boy and you're a boy and you're a boys, I love you. Okay. You have that girlfriend that just is devious. Let me tell you an example of a girlfriend that I had. Girl, like, you know, like, let's go shopping together. Not the other thing which has happened, though. Um, being pan is interesting. Um, I don't know. I, I just got hit on, on by a bunch of lesbians that wanted to rape me with strap-ons. Like, there were 20 of them. And then they were like... Mm. Oh, this isn't a girl. We thought she was just biting her breasts to be butch. It's a boy. It's a boy. Any which way. So, she gets you this, like, really ultra cool cologne. And she convinces you it's worth... I don't know that it's... Let me tell you. Okay. This cologne, I... Like... She says, don't spray it, don't spray it. Like, I put one dab, and the whole apartment smelled for, like, ten days, and um, there were no spiders anymore. So she gets you this, and she takes you to... It was Hudson Bay at the time, and she's like, there was no Nordstrom here. And she's like, you remember that cologne that got you? You know... I really have never tried Champs Elysees, and it's really way cheaper, and it would be so cool if you just get it for me. But you know that she fucked you over, and you know how you know she fucked you over? Because I don't want to name it the designer of this cologne that lasted for five minutes for very good reasons, but I'm going to give you some clues about the designer. Okay, to him, black is not just a color, which it isn't. Um, it's not just a primary color. It's everything. This is a man whose apartment, they take people who are mean to blind people and keep them there for a month. Night vision goggles doesn't work in this apartment. There's like one little sliver of chrome on a piece of furniture. And so you don't know if you're at the fridge, if you're on the toilet. He knows, he knows because there's gradations of black. All right, are you are you getting it? Let me give you more clues. Um, unless he's wearing bronzer, he always looks burnt. Always, like it's, it's just awful. So this guy decided to make the ultimate cologne, and it was called a Silver Noir. Yeah, it's fucking Tom Ford, for fuck's sakes. Yes, sue me, Tom Ford. So, he makes this cologne called Silver Noir that lasts, like, for five minutes in New York. And, and it was only supposed to be sold to native New Yorkans because no one else could survive it. Why? Why was this cologne so amazing but deadly? Um, it had, like, a top note of cinnamon but there was like some leather in it and then there was like every single scent that Lush ever created and the consistency was like European oil like it just you you sprayed it and then a globular drop came out and it burned through the floor and it smelled so great well I decided to do some research on this cologne because I'm like this really smells good but my cat thinks it's evil. So, this is what the man that thinks um, silver is daring. Daring. It's, it's Silver is not a color to this man. Gold is not a color. They are precious metals. This is what this fucking silver noir cologne was made of. The base of it was sh dark shatter. All right. There is like 6,000 people who d uh, who are on chemo for various reasons that in the hospital are like, oh, this is called dark shatter. It's a bit better than the THC-free 
oils. It'll like really help. And then all their organs died. The rest of the healthy organs died. That's why like I was really resistant to so, like this this oil's THC free. You're not gonna you're gonna still be so I'm like, no, no, I heard about shatter and you guys were giving it out. So that's the that's the base of Silver Noir. So how did they get all the lush scents at the time? And leather and cinnamon and nicotine tobacco to smell so good. Well, th there's two other notes in there that formaldehyde and arsenic. So somehow native New Yorkans can survive this cologne, but if you didn't live there all your life, you die. So I researched it and apparently it was taken off the market. Now, my devious fag hag worked at a laboratory where they were trying to make biochemical weapons to kill people who are, aren't white. Evil. Evil, evil, evil. I'm not completely Irish, people. There is some native in me, okay? We're not going to get into it right now. So she swiped it from a laboratory testing situation. So she didn't even fucking pay for it. How I knew this is because her friend, fuck, I was about to say name, phoned me up and said, by the way, and I said, I just researched and she gave me this killer clone. So the next day, um, she was like, um, okay, so can you, can you get me the shop, so they say? And I'm like, oh, okay. And so we take them, and we're gonna get it. And then I said, oh my God, you're black gold platinum card can i see it for a minute and she's like okay and i look at it and i'm like i go to the girl at the it was like a multiple it was fucking hudson bay at that point they it was, it was like they were so whatever it's like let's just put mont blanc and tom ford and chanel together in like one little encasement so i'm like can you throw in um that new uh, white Mont Blanc cologne, because I think it would really smell good on her too. And here, use this credit card, and she looks at me and I said, bitch, you almost killed me. A segue into something totally unrelated, but totally, 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 totally. I heard, but I don't believe it's true, because I watched a year and a half in the life of, that um, Metallica asked Tom Ford to design the black album cover with Betsy Johnson, just to give it a bit of sparkle. So Tom came up with a cover that was apparently 5,000 shades of black. And apparently his life ambition is to make a color, even though black's not a color, but he thinks it's a color that's darker than black. And that's not possible, is it? Um, but yeah, I think he can do it. So. Betsy Johnson's like, um, we just, like, need to spice it up a bit. Let's, like, put, like, a snake decal on their, like, logo. And she did that. And Tom Ford was, like, blind for, like, three months. Um, he still could, do, he could still do the patterns. He, you know, he just took the charcoal and went, uh, 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 and get the seamstress to do this because Halston didn't train me that good. Um, I wonder what on, went on there. So... Fights that my grandmother and mother would have. My mother thought that the Black Album sucked and was a sellout and was pansy division and was just awful. And my mother didn't... My mother was like a good Catholic, though she said she was atheist. Like... I, I don't know how to... Listen, my grandmother was like a fashionista, but she dated like Hell's Angels. She was like a fucking Hell's Angels maven, right? Like, she was convinced when, you know, when I was three, not when I was born, when I was three, um, she, 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 she told my mother, you have to accept that your child might be queer or want to cut his dick off at some point. 
And my mother's like, that child already loves ACDC. We're going to introduce Metallica at six. That's such a butch child. There's no fucking way. And my grandmother's like, look at the, I had bigger lips. Look at the lips. Look at the eyes. Look at the hair. Some boys like boyish things to the point where, you know, it's like, I cut off, my mother bought me a Barbie doll and I cut off all her hair and I like tried to saw off her boobs. And, um, and then she bought me a Ken doll and I was like, that is the prettiest Barbie ever. Is that Rob Lowe? No, any which way. So, my grandmother was like, you're such your mother's son. The both of you, it's like, because she, she listened, she heard metal, okay? She's like fucking 60. Like, the men she dated at, like, Harleys and, like, fucking, like, just crazy. So, to her, it was all just white noise. But she was like, you're your mother's son. Both of you just, like, seem to, like, people pumping on the E string, like, galloping horses at 200 beats per minute with 5,000 distortion pedals. So, she she liked country music. Uh, she, but not good country music. She liked, like, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm gay, and I don't like Dolly Parton. Jaylene, kill me. She liked Dolly Parton. She liked Shania Twain. Well, she, uh, that's why she didn't mind Def Leppard, right? Because, like, Mutt Lang was like, oh, how do I write for Shania? Oh, let's just rip off what I did with Def Leppard. Oh, God, what else did she like? Um... So, but she didn't mind a bit of Doobie Brothers, um, some Parliament Funkadelic, she, and she liked some hip hop. She was really into Rod Digger. Um, people that was like, don't ask. Um, she thought Lil Kim was a drag queen and should be my like influence for life. Um, and um, she really, really, really liked Missy Elliott, but she was convinced that Missy Elliott was Mae West. Um, ghost possessing the black woman. I don't. My grandmother was a little. So they're having this conversation, and my my grandmother goes, "Well, you know, to me, I don't mind the black album. It's um, it's something that's called music. Um, the only problem I have with it is um, the guitar player." who's doing, like, the rhythm stuff is, like, really grooving away at it, but the drummer is, like, doing an adequate job, but it's like he's struggling, and anything below 140 on that album, it's, it's just not funky. And the problem was that she was dating Lars Ulrich at the time and had no clue he was in Metallica, and he was sitting in the room, and he was nodding in the agreement. Now, Lars... Ulrich was my grandmother's attempt at dating an effeminate man. That man used, like, the most severe anti-wrinkle cream for, like, 90-year-olds. Okay, that's not true. She didn't date Lars Ulrich, but it could have happened. This is a woman that took me to the Hells Angels Club when I was, like, 14 and said there was one guy there that they were like, mm, how can we handle this? And she's like... Look at him, look at my, this is, this is my little, little, little thing. Look at his lips, look at his eyes. I put some eyeliner on, he sort of looks like a girl. You could, we can, I can't, I can't name the name. Thank God my mother comes running in and she's like, first you want him to form, perform how many licks at the grade eight dance and now, this, you, the, my grandmother was crazy, any which way. Um, this now segues into Pepper the Cat. I love Pepper the Cat because she knows what she wants when she wants it. Listen, nap time is priority. And cats of that certain age sleep, like, all the time. So, like, if she's drinking out of her water bowl and she needs to nap, there's no question she needs to nap. So she just stretches over the water bowl and passes out. Now, the funny thing is, is this is, like, a typical day in getting Pepper into the apartment. It's like you, like, go, 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 go. You get her up, she walks three steps, and then she 
collapses. But when she's hyper and she's running across the hallway, um, like a runner on steroids, and people come up and they're like, I didn't believe in ghosts, but there's this apparition running. I'm like, no, it's Pepper. And they're like, no, Pepper's pretty. She's a dominatrix, but she's pretty, you know, I don't want to say lazy because that's like insulting, but she likes to take her time. And I'm like, no, it's, it's Pepper. Pepper, stop. Pepper. Pepper, go, 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 stop. Pepper, stop. And they're like, no, holy shit, it's Pepper. I love you, Pepper. I really, 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 really do. Now, when I first heard Judas Priest, Dissident Aggressor from 1977, I thought it was a Judas Priest cover band covering Slayer's Dissident Aggressor, which they were covering from Judas Priest from 1988. So I'm just saying that South of Heaven is like a really good mellow metal album. Everything on there is like the fastest is like 112, I swear to God, except on Mandatory Suicide for like two seconds. And I don't know, to speak of Shatter, I don't know if they were... Um, Drinking a combination of Seagram's and Shatter and a bit of Lightning at that point. And I know that, um, what's his name? The drummer, Dave Lombardo, at Tendonitis. So he's like, I'm a jazz drummer, by the way. Like, let me groove. Can I just fucking groove for once? I'm tired of going. <laughs> it's come to the point where they play South of Heaven um, for, like, old people who are deaf but like need to like at least register something with their hearing aids to calm him down so if you've never heard south of heaven by slayer go get it now how you really fuck with someone's head is you play their first album and i'm not going to grab the t-shirt and i can't i asked i asked bill is there an affordable samsung galaxy that can like shoot an image to my door so I can show it on YouTube videos and the one that they sold me it just whatever shot on the door looked like a home sex tape of John Goodman and Al Coulter going at it no so that caused shattering of my mirror so I was like no 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 no, no. I said this phone's possessed by I hate to say it, but this phone is possessed by Pentecostal people, okay? And people that hate everyone who isn't porcelain white and would burn in Alaska um, on the off season, okay? All right. And culture, um, size zero is not fat and you're 50 pounds and I don't know how you're still walking. I guess the deal with Satan you made? I don't know. I really don't know. I've lost my train of thought. Fuck. Oh, Lord. Lordy, Lord, 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 Lord. Oh, 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 oh. One last thing. One last thing. There is a girl that's famous. She's a woman, but there is a girl that's like, known by the people who are intelligent. She was a Bond girl, okay? But she was in Penny Dreadful as the lead female role, and fuck off on the two seasons, you bastards. You could have kept it going for 20 years. I mean, and more progressively than Law & Order, okay? So, um, Eva Green, I love you I love oh you've okay this would be the penny dreadful way of speaking to Eva Green you are like an effervescence absinthe rotting the brain into erotic desire I prefer 
the bear-esque type of modular form in the East River. But you, my dear, are everything I want in a woman. I don't necessarily wish to consummate a relationship of that kind with you, but I wish for you to be in my life. And now she's in a new timber and moving, she looks so fucking hot of that. Like, I would want that to be my headmistress. I would, I would. You see, there was a school for unique children, but my mother was like, yeah, you're not really that unique, so we're going to send you to, like, the unique posers school. So, yeah, that was really, 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 really cool for, like, six months. It was really, really cool, you know, because, um... Percy Manning was going to finish his grade three education, finally. And... No. No, it just didn't work out. Catholic school didn't work out. Um, apparently, I liked what the nuns did to me. So, I'm not... You know what? Nuns are now really cool since um, Pope Francis, because for a while, he was, like, really, 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 really anti-trans. for And... Because he was okay with the gay thing. He was like, just repent and confess, but just don't describe your details. And then finally, he was like, no, I feed birds. I live in a 100-square-foot room. Um, I have no security, and everyone wants to assassinate me. And I believe in quantum physics. So, he goes, pronoun usage is important. So I bump into this nun. And again, I'm having a problem with my vaporizer. And she, she was like, um, excuse me, child. I would like to be very respectful to who you are. Can I, um, are, what is your pronoun usage? What are you using today? Because you sort of, to me, look like a really cute goth version of Adele, but also maybe the next wife for Ellen after Portia de Rossi, um, finally dies from alcoholism. I'm like, okay, um, Sister Violetta, um, they, them. And then these Presbyterians are like, the rapture, the rapture. And she goes, excuse me, excuse me. I will help you with your vaporizer for your nicotine in just a moment. I just have to say something. Um, I don't want to rain on your parade. But nowhere in the Bible is there anything called the rapture. I should know. She was really cool. She helped me with my vaporizer. But I wanted to test the limits because I'm, yeah, I'm not even a recovering Catholic. I just can't stop it. I can't. Um, I was like, what's it like being married to, the, you know, Number two, where is it number? I just, um, we can't make up our mind any which way. Actually, we can. It's just everyone else who's like, no, there's the father, there's the son, there's the whole. And she says, listen, it is the best, it's the best marriage ever. Now, if I go for three months and only have one cookie a night, and I have two, and I work on my envy and jealousy issues. There is a real rapturing that happens spiritually that is very satisfying. Thank you, Sister Violeta, for being very honest about that. Wow. So, um, okay. All right. Um, how do I become a nun? And she's like, do you still have that? Do you still have the thingy? She didn't say thingy. She said, do you have your appendage of uh, birth usage? Do you still try to, you know, say you're supposed to like, even though you're like, whatever you are, you still need to have a child biologically. And I'm like, no, it's still there. She says, no, um, if it's cut off and they really recreate, 
you don't even need boobs, then, but she says, you don't understand the process, because I was supposed to be a biochemist, and they were like, you are just too good at it, so you're going to be the garbage lady. So she said, you have to really, really, really think hard if you want to become a nun, you transition, but I really suggest you don't transition, um, just don't keep it, just keep it. And I'm like, no, I'm totally pan. I'm comfortable with it. I'm comfortable with it. I'm just losing a lot of weight and my man boobs are going. So, my mother um, was tired of doing this to me constantly because my hair would grow every five minutes. And she's like, fuck, he wants it shaved. She's like, you're fucking in the metal. Fucking grow your hair out. I'm sick of having to fucking cut it every hour and then shave you down while we're on the street at Safeway. It's like, excuse me, I just have to get the razor blade out and because there's some stubble and he wants smooth skin. So I had long hair for a while. And um, my grandma was like, that's going to make him more butch. Like, Really, really. Um, I'm just going to leave with this piece of advice to Tom Ford. The next perfume should be called I'm gonna die, I'm fucking calling this red. I'm gonna die, I'm fucking calling this red noir. And there should be a base of heroin. A bit of Suboxone, Oxycontin, and the Motorhead Tour Jacket worn by Lemmy from 1980. That's it, I'm done.